Tonight, the most coveted trophy in the DNQ karting series is up for grabs. It is the Miltona 50 and the Miltona races for the DNQ Dirt Series. We are back at Millbridge, and we are very excited to fire off this season of racing. Ronnie Carroll is ready to go, looks to try to win the ARCA Series Championship. Let's go down to a guy who's driving in the Heavy Cup Series. Well, a seriously hungover driver down here, David Mayo. David, you had a great time at Ghostface Brewery last night celebrating a birthday. Uh, not yours, but somebody else's. How was it? Man, it was spectacular. I don't think you could ask for any better situation than last night. Uh, we celebrated Mike Roth's birthday and uh, at the Ghostface Brewery in Mooresville. It was wonderful. Beer was great. Got to flow in a little too much. I drank a lot. A lot. A lot of the Scottish Shell went down. I threw up about eight times last night and once this morning. We've seen drivers like Drew Herring back in the DNQ uh, start of this deal show up hungover and win races consistently. Is that something you think you can do here today? I'm hoping that's what I can do. You know, I, I've done it a few times changing tires, <laughs> so I'm hoping that uh, I'm hoping that's what that's what we're going with right now is we're going to try the drunk, hungover phase and winning. I too have done that myself. Carry tires, uh, hungover shit. It actually worked out a lot better, but I will say. It's, it has its drawbacks, too. Yeah. David Mayo, hoping to be calmed down in that seat here tonight, running the Ghostface Brewing Heavy Cup Series, and he uh, definitely got a good part of his sponsorship there last night. Yes, sir. Well, hopefully Mayo nurses that hangover, but we have a lot of Predator champions, starting with John Kinder from last year. Kinder killed it last year. No one could really touch him unless he got hurt, and we got some uh, all-stars like Alex Cunningham from Hammer Carts in there, and Caitlin Ben's drinking up on that wall. It's uh, quite the crew to be a part of. Let's go down to last year's champion, John Kinder. Well, we've seen driver crew chief combos before work out where the guy who used to race ends up becoming a crew chief and running. And you guys were part of that party last night that David Mayo was at. So uh, are you going to be all right? A uh, little rough today, but I think we'll be all right. <laughs> now, Tony, you know your crew chief's hung over his shit today. Is that is that any concern for you in the seat? No, not at all. He'll, he'll get the calls right. He knows what he's doing. So this cart last year won the championship. Kinder had a really good season in it. How much pressure is on you to win in this thing right off the bat? Yeah, there's a little bit, but I don't know. I won that uh, race that I sub. <laughs> hey, I won that sub race for him last year. <laughs> so. Yeah, that is true. After Tech and uh, Tony Barkman here, he's going to run for the Arca Series championship. Crew Chief John Kinder, a little hungover, but sometimes that actually works to your advantage. All right, so a driver who's looking to win this race here tonight is Tyson Friesen. He has got a very good winning history in DNQ Series competition, but he has not won the Miltona 50, Jay-Z. It's a tough race to win. Miltona is one of the races that draws the most entries. Uh, people actually put time and money into this race and want to show up and kick everyone's ass. They show up bright-eyed, uh, bushy-tailed, and not hung over for this one. Um, you know, Tyson's had his work cut out for him with as much success as he's had. Um, you know, he's still a favorite to win, though, even though he hasn't gotten uh, the, the trophy just yet. We got a lot of comp competition in this thing tonight. Steve Padula and James Stanley Jr. are also out here tonight. So he's got a, and LG McCleary, he's got a pretty good amount of guys he's got to race for that Happy trophy. For sure. Well, let's go down to Ronnie Carroll, who is hoping to win the Arca Series Championship. Ronnie Carroll down here, part of the DNQ Bush Series sponsorship. So we want to thank you for coming on. And uh, you're running Arca this year, correct? Oh, yeah. We're going to give it a shot full time this year. See how that goes. We ran like two races last year, did pretty good. So we'll try it. Yeah, you won two Arca races last year. A great season for you. Now, running the full season this year, what are you doing differently now? Uh, really nothing. We was just testing waters last year, a few races, to see how it goes. We, we run full time on Fridays here, so we'll probably try to do both this season. Carroll Tractor and Trailer Repair is the Bush Series sponsor. Um, what do you get out of sponsoring a series like the Bush Series? Uh, well, I mean, just try to throw my name out there a little bit, try to grow business a little bit, and return help y'all guys out in the karting industry. Uh, we love racing carts. We love doing what we're doing here. Uh, we like what you guys do, you know, put on a good show and stuff. I just want to help support that and keep it going. Well, Carol, Tractor and Trailer Repair, the official sponsor of DNQ Bush Series. Ronnie's hoping for an ARCA championship this year, guys. All right, Jay-Z, let's take a look at the past Miltona 50 winners. And uh, a name that we talked about that's already here is Steve Padula. But Jason Eford that one year snuck away and got one for Brandon GRP. Tim Nye did the same. 
And uh, Jason Denny last year absolutely beat everybody. Denny else. had the biggest dick by a mile. It wasn't even a contest. But, uh, you know, people like Eford show up out of nowhere. They're kind of fast, would hang around the top five and get lucky. And there's a few people last year that had some good runs, but with the domination of people like Denny and Kinder, uh, you know, they didn't get a chance to shine. So maybe this year we'll have a first time winner. The fifth year we've been running this race is going to get very interesting. But as they prep the track, we are going to go to commercial break. We'll be right back with the ARCA feature. Hi, I'm Dick Trickle. You want to win $100,000? In Annapolis, win with the winner sweepstakes. Just go to the Napa Auto Parts store and guess the winner of the Napa 500. A little tip, it's going to be me. If you want to choose some other hot dog, you can still win a trip to the race. Plus almost 2 million prizes and special offers. So go to Napa and enter. That'll work. And remember, November 16th could be a really big day. I think we get champagne. Arca Series starting lineup and on the Tar Heel Race Supplies pole is Tony Barkman with Eli Ware on his outside. Second row, we got Nigel Standish and Kevin Lively. Row number three is going to feature Ronnie Carroll and Ronnie Shirk. Badass brothers right there. The uh, next row is our friend David Markham and Curtis Markham on the outside of him. Little family fun. Michael Reimer and Justin Anderson in our next row. Anderson driving that Jeffords mobile. Uh, David Crops and uh, an old familiar face, Mike Melton in the 46. DJ Vanderlei makes his series de debut along with Josh Long outside of him. Here is the DNQ Pink Magic Arca Prep Series. This is amateur talent, and they can run on Burris and Maxis this year, and there's the rest of the information for the series. It's a great series to start off in, and that's why Pink Magic's a, a perfect uh, sponsor for this class. These guys are just getting on board. Uh, you know, people like Josh Long here with the DNQ Dirt on board. Pink Magic is a very easy tire program to follow. Helps you build your notebook and get your tires on point quicker. Ronnie Shirk will have another in-car camera for the DNQ Dirt Series. And we're firing off this season. We had a lot of weather. The track looks like it looks for a reason. We had a ton of weather here. Track's going to be rough tonight, but you got to make it happen. As John Kinder watching Tony Barkman, his protege. Kinder, the crew chief for Barkman, he is hung over his shit. Let's see if it works as the green flag flies and we are underway. Well, track looks rough. Uh, pretty clean turn one for the first race of the season, if I'm going to be honest with you. As we're three wide down the back stretch, mark him on the inside, but uh, he lets some people through the middle there. They're all clean. Now you see as three and four looks like it's going to be the biggest problem all day. One and two looks pretty solid though, Jay-Z. That seems to be the history of Millbridge. You know, they do a great job of prepping the track even with inches of rain as we're on board here with Josh Long and it's showing, you know, just how tough it is to navigate out there. But one and two always seem pretty smooth. Three and four are the turns to break up if it's going to happen. Yeah, and it, we've seen people go up to the top side of that race uh, during the race and find speed up there. Mike Rott won a race running the top line both uh, sides of the racetrack as we got Nigel Standish up to Tony Barkman's back bumper. But is it uh, one of these things where you search around to try to not find the wet areas on the racetrack as the race goes? Absolutely, especially in ARCA. This is the worst of the worst. So if you have half a brain and can figure out to move up a line and stay out of those bumps, you'll walk everyone else. You'll look like a hero. Yeah, it looks like everybody's bottom feeding right now. It's a t as we got, whoa, we got one right in the raw. Justin Anderson rode the wall there as Josh Long has an issue, and that's going to bring out the caution. Not sure what happened to him there. Classic Arca, classic. Yeah, we had one ride the wall. That was pretty impressive. Anderson got onto it. Not sure what happened. Tough break for Josh Long. Looks like he threw the chain, which is going to happen when the track is bumpy as it is here today. Well, they're not checklisting their shit, Bob. Uh, this is what happens. We get yellows. <coughs> Oh, here we go. Barkman takes the green. Ronnie Carroll um, went to the top of the racetrack there. Uh, it may pay off for him to get a spot or two, but uh, I don't think that's the way to go tonight. No, not on these restarts. The bottom is where all the speed is. We got one more in the mud on the inside. That'll bring out a yellow. Curtis Markham slopping around in the mud there. Let's see if uh, we can take a look at what happened in the Pink Magic instant replay. Looks like David put him down there. Yeah, there wasn't much room. He caught the left front on the berm and uh, went to go play in the mud, as he's known to do. Here we go. We are going back under green, and I love the Arca series. This is uh, by far my favorite series of all of the NQ. 
And, uh, whoa, Lively caught a piece of that inner berm. Now, that is something that you could mess somebody up with is run them down in the berm and uh, screw them up too. I've seen some people get hurt real bad getting turned down in a heavy, wet berm like that. It's like 2 a.m. You think that size 14 chick's a good idea until she rolls over on top of you in the middle of the night, and then you suffocate to death. It's no fun. <laughs> John Kinder watching his driver, Tony Barkman, who has, uh, has plans to run full-time in the ARCA Series this year. He's got a ride from John Kinder, and he is learning, and he uh, won a race after Tech last year, but it uh, looks like he's got a pretty good piece here tonight driving uh, the Caleb Musburger piece. He's been sniffing around towards the front, and if he's got Kinder's notebook to go off of and that experience, uh, he'll be up front. I don't think he has anything to worry about. Does he start and do a sniff the, uh, the top line there too? And looks like Josh Long has another issue, and that is going to bring out the caution again. Probably threw another chain off of that bitch, yeah. which is going to happen once you do it once. Probably going to happen again. Uh, I, I would he's going to turtle walk his ass back to the – yeah, he's done for the night. Well, here we go. Back green, you know, for sure it looks like this may work out for him taking the top on this restart. Maybe he can get down in the fourth position and uh, run somebody down in that berm and make the pass. Oh, he about got turned. And this, this pack race is getting a little rough here as the top three are smart and start to pull away. When the track's this heavy, heavier than the women Bill Chester pulls out of the bar, uh, you really got to throw a ton of prep at the tires. Uh, I know Pink Magic makes a, a gold prep that's designed for a wet, heavy track like this where you just kill the tire and try to get any grip you can in it. And maybe those top three have it figured out. Yeah, Standish and uh, Carroll got a good jump there off of one and two. It's really tough to pass, especially when you're trying not to hit the bumps. As you see, these guys are starting to... Uh, dig into the racetrack a little bit. Looks like Standish was doing that, but the top three and four, I'd say probably the top four have the best shit right now. Yeah, they're distancing themselves by four zip codes. Uh, the rest of the field's got to get their shit together if they want to keep up, but uh, you know, it looks like those front four are putting hurting on everybody. I think part of the reason they cannot get away from each other is the gear rule that we have in this series. As the caution is out, that should be our five to go. We'll see what happens here on this final restart. You know, Bob, I think the gear rule is a good rule to have it. It puts everything back in the driver's hands, takes some of the thinking out of it. Thinking in ARCA is not oh, good. Oh, that, that was a debris caution. So we had a piece of nose jammed in the racetrack. So uh, legit debris caution. All right, all right, no bueno. But we're going to get back to green here. <laughs> going back green, and here we go. Yeah, Standish hit a hell of a rut right there as uh, we only have a couple laps left in this race here tonight. Stanish hit a rut. That opened the door for Ronnie Carroll, who we talked to earlier. He is now running second, trying to make the move on Tony Barkman. Looks like he's there. Barkman runs him down the racetrack. Three wide going through one. Carroll ends up the worst of it. Stuck in that inside berm. Uh, tough break for him. I'd be pissed if I were him. Yeah, you know what? You can definitely use that berm to your advantage. Let's see. Barkman ran him down the racetrack. Then they're three wide, and there's nowhere to really go there. Carroll got the worst of it. Yeah, Carol. Only time you don't want to be on the bottom. No, no, you you, you got to lift in that scenario because you're faster than everyone else. Um, as a, we're back to green and the top four start running away again. Stannis got a terrible jump on that restart and he makes contact with DJ Vanderlei, who has an issue. Looks like he's going to pull off the racetrack. Markham's up there going for third place. Good <laughs> run for him after hanging around in the back of the pack most of the race. Yeah, if you just hang out, you might finish. And Lively gives them a nice little shove there as they head down the back stretch. Give it all to uh, Tony Barkman. Eli Ware, though, he is starting to wear that ass out on the rear bumper as Ronnie Carroll gets moved down on the berm again. But Eli Ware is coming out of nowhere here to make a charge towards the front. Yeah, it, you know what it is? It's that steel hanging on the back of his neck. He's all party, and that's what he came <laughs> here to do. So uh, I expect him to finish up towards the front every single race this season as long as he keeps that style going. Oh, absolutely. If he rocks the mullet, he is going to do very well this season, especially in ARCA. Uh, absolutely. He's a, he's a kid rock album away from being a champion. You know what I mean? <laughs> oh. Kevin Lively goes around. We only had a couple laps left. And that's going to bring out the call. He just stepped on it, looks like. Let's have a look at that again. Yeah, he's in there, and I, he just checks up, and his dick isn't even that big, so I don't know how he stepped on it that bad. But, you know, <laughs> yeah. poor guy sitting there with his white helmet and uh, you know, his disappointment all over his face. Well, here we go. Only a few laps left. David Markham to the top. Green flag, we are underway. Only a couple laps left in this feature. 
Eli Warren second, David Markham third, Standish fourth, Shirk and Lively trying to make up the spots he just lost. You know, I expected Standish to maybe run away with it with some of the success he had last season after he gets underneath Markham and takes third place away uh, last lap here. The top two are running away with it, but there's a, a hornet's nest there for fourth, fifth, and sixth. Can Eli Ware make the move? Doesn't look like he's going to. Tony Barkman is going to take home the win. I don't think anybody's mad about Tony Barkman winning a race. He's kind of like the Mark Martin of the series. Everyone just loves the guy. Nigel Stannis finished third here tonight. Nigel had a lot of beating and banging towards the back of that field. Yeah, it was a damn shit show back there. I mean, the, you hit the bottom, people were chopping and blocking. I should have just stayed on the bottom of those restarts. My, my spotter out there told me to go to the top, and that really didn't work. We tried it twice, and it, it really didn't work the second time. So we learned. Nigel Stanges will stay on the bottom next time, guaranteed, in the Arca Series feature. Eli Ware comes home in the second place in the Arca Series race feature here. Eli, your first ever DNQ race, how was it? It was great. I did way better than I thought, and um, this previous year was my first year, and I did Junior 3, and that gave me some experience, but I can't thank Mike Hartz enough for this opportunity. Eli Ware comes home second tonight in the DNQ ARCA Miltona feature. Ready? And elated Tony Barkman down here in victory lane. Tony, you're able to hold off Eli Ware at the end to get your uh, second official win. Yeah, first one across the finish line first, so I'll take that. i got to thank uh, John Kinder, Caleb Newsberger, Mike Carver's helped me a lot along the way. Everyone's helped me along the way. Rims won. Uh, I bought back this paint, helped me with my helmet. Buzzy Racing has helped me with a bunch of stuff, too. I can thank everyone enough. Tony Barkman. Takes home his first win in the DQ Arca Series, and he's going to get some bush light. Well, LJ McCleary talks to Adam Welsh before the Goodies Dash, the five star Goodies Dash Series race kicks off. And we will be right back after these messages. Mike, toss me a bush. Wow. Bush. Let's take a look at the five star tire specialties by Caleb Kennard Racing. Goodies Dash Series. Adam Welsh on the pole with Robert Showalter on the outside pole. Mike Melton and Mike Contarino in the 444. David Markham and Ronnie Shirk in row three. And Dylan Silverman rounds out the field in the 98. Here is Goody's Dash. So we have the left front four and a half inch tires that you would run on your left front all the way around with a minimum six PSI rule. They can run the Burris as well, which uh, Burris does not have the incentive program out here tonight, but they do at some of the races as we are going green. And this is a little weird to see on some of these carts having these small right side tires. I think it's a great idea. It takes some of the, uh, the grip out of the right hand side of that go-kart, make sure baller ass drivers like LJ McCleary can put their talent on display and drive away from the rest of the guys in the field. So normally this is LJ McCleary, but this is Adam Welsh driving the cart tonight. This is actually his cart he let LJ use, but he's actually out driving it tonight. He wanted to try the Goodies Dash Series. Well, good on Adam, man. This is the, the race to come out in, and he's, uh, he's showing some talent right now. I'm impressed. As we look at the Waffle Belly cam, we've got them out there showing how much of a gap he has already. Didn't look like he was turning the wheel that much, and for no stagger in that thing, that is impressive. Yeah, you know, they probably figured out that maybe you got to adjust the geometry um, and add a little more mechanical weight transfer to that go-kart because you don't have that uh, uh, staggered reliant to help get you into the turn. So he's definitely got some stuff figured out, some next-level shit. Probably spent some time on the setup plate this week. He did. Um, Adam Welsh, the Contarinos, and Showalter all came out here and tested the Goodies Dash package right before our first race that got rained out. So they have a very good notebook on what it takes to get these things turning uh, with no stagger. But these carts are just as fast as the ARCA and Bush Series carts. They actually run the same gear. I believe it. I mean, you've got less tire, less rotating mass in the back of that axle uh, to turn. So you know, with these low horsepower engines, you're trying to get every little you know, piece of efficiency you can. Uh, you know, I'm not surprised. Hungover or sober, you know, these guys are still turning some good lap times. Mike Melton, the last Goodies Dash Series winner, running second. He had such a good card that night, and I was able to hold on to the win for the win as we go on board with Adam Welsh. And just, I am amazed at the fact he's not turning that wheel at all. They've got that thing figured out uh, really well to the point where I'd like to take a peek at their numbers too and see what they have going on because uh, uh, they got the hot setup right now. That thing looks really easy to drive. With a minimum six pound PSI rule, I mean, there you figure they'd be sliding around, but it seems like it's just enough grip and uh, it's working out for him very well. Well, 
We are watching the Miltona races. We're going to go side by side so you don't miss some a thing. Some should never change, like the crisp, cold refreshment of Bush. But some things should, like Frank's camp songs. Belly buttons are funny. Are you an innie or an Audi? What do you got? Any? Tell me what you got. Uh, Audi. Tell me what you got. Any. We've got three innies and only one Audi. What are the chance? Yeah, wow. <laughs> Ever dreamed of driving a real cup car? Well, now you can. This is the fan controller. That was completely inappropriate. What was that all about? Welcome back to the Millbridge Speedway. It's Miltona race night. Salisbury, North Carolina. We are on our five to go caution. The cone is out. We want to thank Chalu Performance for their sponsorship of the DNQ karting series. If you have any late models or anything, go check them out and five star specialties by Caleb Clinard Racing. If you have any tire problems, go see Caleb Clinard. He will get you hooked up with some tires. Well, David Markham took the top, I would jump the shit out of this restart. Would you not, Jay-Z? Absolutely. Uh, you got Adam Welch kicking everyone's ass. You got to take every opportunity you have, but it looks like Markham uh, totally yeah. blew it, and I don't know <laughs> what he was thinking. Maybe he just saw some yeah. boobies in the stands I'm not or so something. Yep, there it is. They're going to say that uh, Welch jumped the restart, so we're going to line them back Junior up real quick and go back green i'd still jump it if i was markham i don't know why what's taking him so long to get going but here we go green flag his clutch must be fucked up or something there's got to be an issue probably he was out there earlier uh you know maybe they got some crap in there from the last run they had and it's just slipping too much i don't know but uh, adam welch is uh, looking like an all-star right now Adam Welsh looks like Kyle Busch driving an Xfinity race. <laughs> uh, he has checked out, and the, this is the actual race. Mike Melton, Mike Connorino, and David Markham beating the shit out of each other for a top three finish. Yeah, you know, it's 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 getting there. Um, this, this class should take off. I, I'm hoping some of the people jump from ARCA into this class and a few more people run it. I think they might actually have a, a better time. You know, you, you go to these high-end strip clubs if you want to, but, you know, it's a different experience. You want to go to that sticky floor, nasty place and have a better time <laughs> as we see the 444 get up into second place. Yeah, you want to go to the Pleasure Dome in Pocono. As the white flag is out for Adam Welsh. And once these tracks start drying out real bad, like we saw in the summer at the end, I mean, the racing was really good, but... Uh, Coming off a of turn four, Adam Welsh has spanked that ass. He is going to take the victory. And we will go down to our top three finishers from tonight's race. Sure, he's fucking over. <laughs> he's had enough. David Markham finished third for the five star the Goodies Dash series here tonight. David, good run for you there in the Goodies Dash series. Yeah, thank you. Uh, that was a rough start to the interview there. Uh, it was a rough <laughs> race out there. We were bouncing around. Uh, it was fun, but it was rough. Um, rattled up. I needed a beer. Uh, but yeah, it was a good time. Um, wasn't sure I was going to pull out a top three, but uh, came away with it in the end. Now, five races this season for nice. It's been my introductory to the sound here. Um, starting to get the feelers out there. Seems like we're starting to get a pretty good following. How is it from the driver's seat? Yeah, it's a lot of fun. Um, maybe the last race we did was a better example of it where the track wasn't so rough. Um, I actually, at the last race, was going faster in the dash series than the Bush and Arca. Um, and it just shows with the Predator motor, you don't get all that tired away. So it made you have to drive it more. It's a little bit harder to pass. Uh, Coming out front David Markham finishes third. A good point start for this uh, 2019 season. Mike Conorino comes home in the second place for the five-star tire treatment for his dash series. Mike, what was it like out there? It looked pretty freaking rough. Five oh, track, four, four, three and four. 
barely hold on, chatter your teeth at him out. So what was it like running these? I know tonight's probably not a good read on them. What was it like running those small tires? Surprisingly enough, they have a lot of grip to them. Well, I think they have just as much grip as the big tires do. Mike Conorino comes up second. Adam Welsh is down here digging. He's run a shit ton of classes. Congratulations on your win. Man, I appreciate it. You know, the guys back at the shop, we busted ass this week and made a tire washer. That was the secret. The automatic tire washer is where this shit came from right here. So you guys came out and tested it, right? <laughs> oh, yeah, we came out and tested We put in like 155 laps just for fun and uh, realized that we needed bigger tires so we could run more races. And uh, that's what we did. <laughs> Adam Welsh, the winner of the Goodies Dash Series race here tonight. Out here isn't measured by where he started. Just where he finishes. Now about a turn four! Takes the rumble win! Champions one race at a time. All right, Jay Z, let's check out the Ghostface Heavy Cup Series starting lineup. James Stanley Jr. got the Tar Heel Racing Supplies Paul Award. And we've got David Mayo and Curtis Markham out here again in the second row. Row number three, SCJ Winslow and Matt Philemon making this series debut. Tim Larson and Casey Graves coming out to the racetrack this evening. Here we go. Heavy Cup Series 425, AKA NKA Engine Package, Burris, or Max is pink and blue. Basically, our Cup Series rules, but with a 425 weight, we are not going green. We had another cart getting ready to go on the racetrack. I don't know what the hell they had going on, but. This series is growing as well. We're starting to get a decent car count for the Heavy Cup Series. No one wants to be skinny anymore, right? Everyone's depressed, everyone's miserable. They want to shame eat their McDonald's in the back corner of the parking lot with the rest of us, all kind of giving each other that knowing nod. So I think 425, uh, you know, combined with some Ghostface Brewing IPA and some McDonald's, that's, that's where you're going to be. That's where the numbers are going to be for this racing series. We're in your flag, we're underway, and we talked to David Mayo earlier. He celebrated a birthday party at Ghostface Brewery. And he said he was gone. Had a bunch of the heavy IPAs, and he looks like shit right now. And now his head is going to be bouncing around in that cart for at least 30 laps here. As uh, Man, he is having a great time already. Now, this is a combo race, Jay-Z. We're actually running with the Millbridge 425 Clone Series. So these guys are out here running. We will not have a five-to-go caution in this race because this is a combo race. And the same thing will happen for the Bush Series here tonight. Trying to minimize the amount of sh uh, races we have tonight, but getting the full show in as well. That's probably smart. I mean, the track's getting rougher and rougher, especially in three and four, which can't be helped. You know, Mother Nature's just a bitch sometimes. Um, so I, I think it's a good thing, and I think you're going to elevate the competition the DNQ series and some of these Millbridge regulars that are out here every single week uh, entering the class as well. So um, Ryan Richmond had his card out here, had a practice accident, flipped it, um, heard it pretty good, so he did not start this event here tonight. He was out here ready to race, though, so it's a shame that he didn't get to run. As we're on board with David Mayo, three and four is just getting a little bit worse, and I think they're going to cut the racetrack after uh, after this feature, so they'll smooth that out a little bit, but it, it's still going to run up no matter what. What usually causes that, Jay-Z? The, the track's just so wet that the pressure from the carts, you know, rolling over the racetrack, push the dirt down and and just make it, uh, you know, uh, rut up uh, like you're kind of pushing your, your hand into wet sand. You know what I mean? These ruts just yes. form from the carts, you know, exerting forces in the middle of the turn. There's, there's nothing you can do. There's no amount of calcium or anything you can put down to prevent it when this much rain fell over the last couple of weeks. And when you get these plus size models out here racing, <laughs> it's only going to make it worse. Uh, the heavier the, <laughs> the drivers are, the worse the racetrack is going to get. So we, this is probably going to run up the worst after this feature. Yeah, you got hair in the chest, <laughs> you got hair in the bellies, and these poor <laughs> bastards are falling out of the seat trying to hang out with all these butts, uh, bumps and ruts. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm impressed the racing's been as good as it has, actually. You know, there's been more boring things like uh, my entire life story out here. So it's, it's <laughs> not too bad. CJ Winslow and Roger Whitaker are racing the shit out of each other right now, and it's good to see that there is some racing going on on the racetrack. Um, Millbridge did, I'll tell you what, they did a really good job. When you look at the infield right now, that's what the racetrack looked like. So the fact that we're out here racing is borderline amazing. And we want to thank them for doing the job that they have done. I mean, you know, you don't even have to say that it's rutted up real bad. We all know that. But the fact that we're racing is amazing right now. 
Yeah, I can't imagine how many hours of overnight work into this thing to get it run in, rolled in, and, and make it raceable. Uh, I know the people at Millbridge do whatever they can to put on a show, and you can't say that about every promoter or racing facility you know, uh, operator um, you know, all over the country. So a big hat to the people. We've got to uh, you know, change the position on the track here, Bob. Yeah, Roger Whitaker makes the move on C.J. Winslow. He's been all over his back bumper the last couple laps, so... See if he can get up to David Mayo. But James Stanley Jr. has walked away from this thing right now. And starting this year, Jay-Z, we have a manufacturer championship. And that will be just based off of you get a point for whatever chassis builder you're driving for when you win a race. So right now, Adam Welsh drove on a Charger chassis. And uh, the one that won the race here earlier uh, was a Ultramax. So Ultramax and Charger will get a point towards the manufacturer championship at the end of the year so uh something that the cart builders can look forward to and uh, compete with yeah i mean when you're in a measuring contest you know a manufacturer's championship uh, adds that big purple vein on the top of your wiener it's, it's really a feather in your cap and it, it's some it's a point of pride for a lot of people especially in the southeast where competition is is so stout between all the different factories so i, I think it's a great incentive that the dnq series put on and it'll bring a lot more attention to the series well, I know that right now James Stanley is in a phantom because if he wasn't, he'd probably get fired. And then uh, David Mayo is driving a hammer cart. So those are your top two right now in the series. But James Stanley, is uh, he won at the fair in the Bush Series race earlier uh, last season. But uh, he's out here in the Heavy Cup Series, and he is making some shit happen. And one driver that was here that did not run this race was Caitlin Bench. All the Hearts carts except for Eli Ware loaded up after they saw the racetrack. They did not want to run on the racetrack tonight. Tough decision to make. We respect the decision, but they are definitely going to lose some points. Yeah, I mean, and Trump didn't have to run for president either. All the polls told him he wasn't going to win, <laughs> but he came out and uh, he raced anyway. So, you know, props to the people that were able to put their carts in the track tonight. You know, we can certainly understand that people may want to preserve their equipment, but, uh, you know, let's focus on the people that are on the race track right now, putting on the best show they can. James Stanley Jr. will take the white flag, and nobody is going to get close to him as long as there's not a caution. He has officially beat David Mayo, who is hung over his shit. But coming off of turn number four, James Stanley Jr. will win the first heavy Ghostface Heavy Brewing Series race of 2019. Let's go down and talk to our top three. Roger Whitaker finishes third in the Heavy Cup Series uh, race. Well, you've run a couple races with us before, but man, tonight is pretty rough out there. But we're out here racing no matter what. But bad weather, you had a good finish though. like from the seat during that race. What do you have to do during the race to uh, find a line and get this right? Drink his tea. Oh, no. <laughs> That's all you can do. Roger held on. He drank his tea tonight. Guys, finished third. Thanks, Roger. Yep. David Mayo finished second here tonight in the DNQ Ghost Face Brewing Heavy Cup Series feature. A really bumpy track tonight, but a good thing. Uh, it was... That's probably the worst track I've ever driven on, condition-wise. I mean, this track here is usually pretty good, but we had a lot of rain. They did a really good job with us still being up in the race. It was just really bumpy, so I mean, actually, they all did a great job. They made the best out of it, and we ran it. Second place finish, start the points off. That's a good finish. That's a solid finish for the night, because I'm not sure Stanley got it full time. So we'll have to see. Hit Mayo comes home. Yep. A little hard working man as always when you run a bunch of different classes here. Uh, James Stanley Jr. takes home the win with the Cup Series. Uh, man, that was uh, pretty rough. Uh, the track is bumpy. They did what they, had, they could do with the racetrack. But what was it like to see? Well, I mean, you just got to hold on. It was, uh, it was definitely rough. It was picking up out of the seat. just kind of... Hold on and grip the wheel as hard as you can. One and two is about like normal, but three and four is just like I said. Hopefully you hit the line right and hopefully you don't bump so bad. But it wasn't, I mean, we're out here racing, so you can't complain. 50 laps here tonight for the uh, Colts on the 50. It's going to be all you got to finish out of the Yeah, I mean, it gets on your forearms, but most, you know, you got to deal with the pain in your back. So I don't know, let's see what we got, see if we can hold on pretty light. James Stanley Jr., your winner here tonight in the Ghost Race Heavy Group. Well, track preparations are going on before the Bush Series feature, but coming up next, the Carroll Tractor and Trailer Repair Bush Series will be going at it. 
Carol Tractor and Trailer Repair Bush Series starting lineup. Caleb Musburger on the Tar Heel Races Applies pole with Nigel Standish on the outside pole. Second row, Kevin Lively back for some more. And Billy Furr. Alex Finley making his debut along with Adam Wilcox. David Markham, our old favorite, and Daniel Croso in the 75. Tim Connorino and Rob Bates, a guy to watch for that championship, is in the next row. Mike Contarino and Johnny Dry. Mike Melton in the next row with our Goodies Dash Series winner, Adam Welsh. And Robert Showalter in the four will round out our Bush Series field. Let's take a look at the information for the CTTR Bush Series. 390 stock predator, 1756 gear rule at Millbridge. Max is pink and blue. You can run Burris. I had already made the three graphic. They take forever to make, so tough shit. You, got, you can run Burris too. Here we go. <coughs> Caleb Newsberger has an in-cart camera. He's on the pole, so it's going to be boring as shit to watch. <coughs> Coming off of turn four, we take the green. Newsberger and Standish. <coughs> Good night. I'm All right. sick of shit. I got Tim Richmond disease or something. All that stripper perfume is making you cough. <coughs> oh, my God. <coughs> it's okay. I'm fine. It's double pneumonia. I'm fine. Yeah, suck it up. Here we go. Put me in a cart. I'd be three tenths faster. <laughs> <laughs> you just dick Pope trickling enough. that shit, doing a pack and a half each race day. So don't worry about yeah. it. You're good. You're tough. Put me in a race car. I'll win Pocono. <laughs> right. Here we go. Oh my god, that's terrible. Billy Fur is in second. We didn't even know he was running, so his picture was Dale Earnhardt, and I have no idea. I've never talked to that guy once in my life. But all I do know is Caleb Musburger is out running this race and leading, and he's got a shit show going on behind him. Musburger's cart was one that Barkman won in, so. They got their stuff right, and there's Kinder and Bargman watching this race, and that's the card they ran before, and he is still leading this race. And Kinder is doing a great job getting out of the seat and getting on top of the pit box, although he is hung over right now. Yeah, you know, you can see it in his face. You know, I'm sure if he breathed on you, it would probably melt the paint off a wall somewhere. Uh, as we got Standish down on the inside making some moves towards the front. Making a move, trying to make a move on Billy Fur. Just, it's so tough. You better do it off of two, or you just hope that they hit the bumps at three and four, and it gets them really upset. But uh, I'll tell you what, he's doing a very good job at getting runs on Fur, and it's only a matter of time before he passes him. Yeah, I think he's got the better go kart overall. He just can't quite turn underneath him and complete the passes. It looks like he's going to get that position going into one. You know your shit's hooked up when you can turn down underneath somebody in the center of the corner and just friggin' blow them out. That is the best feeling uh, when you're driving. Oh, yeah. We got the Musburger <laughs> out front here again. Just on a little Sunday drive as we're on board with him. And you get a good idea of, of what he's feeling through the steering wheel as his head's bouncing all around. But, but again, you know, he's uh, got that right BAC level, so he's still hitting all his marks, but he's not overthinking it either. It looks like one and two is a little wet off the corner there, but it doesn't seem that bad at all. One and two is pretty damn good. It just seems like uh, when, when you get in three and four, you have to be very selective on how you hit your entry getting into three and four. Because it seems like the, there's some ruts there that you got to watch out for. As we have got somebody slow as shit just bottling everything the fuck up. Bob, it's no different than Atlanta. You know, you got those sealer seams in the middle of the racetrack, and the driver's got to pick which side of those seams they want to run on. Same thing here at Millbridge tonight. You know, you've got uh, you know, certain lines that are a little bit smoother than the others, and you just got to figure out which one's fast. And with the level of talent out there and how small everyone's penis is, if you can figure it out just a little bit, you'll, you'll win. Absolutely. There is a lot of small dicks in this field. There is no doubt about it, uh, especially here in the booth as well, Jay-Z. I'm not going to lie. Um, we're not very big as well. But you know what? We're up here doing the best that we can with what we've got. And... Uh, my goodness, we have got a mess on this race check right now. Stan is doing very well, though, for uh, his card. He, he did well in the ARCA feature, so I think uh, 
a lot of his notes carried over to the Bush series, and that's why we have an Arca series, so those guys can learn and get more seat time to run in the Bush series. Hey, absolutely. And, and, you know, you got a, a couple sets of tires you bring with you, maybe three or four. Um, you know, some of these Arca guys only have one or two maybe. Um, you, you take the first set, you, exper you experiment and find out which works. You say, hey, maybe a little bit more prep. You come out for the second, you know, the second uh, feature race, and you get those tires right, and all of a sudden you're a, a fifth-place car at Narca. Maybe you're a second-place or first-place car out here in the Bush Series. So, uh, again, always building that notebook. That was cool to see the different lines that all the cars were taking. Uh, looked like Museberger goes uh, higher in one and two, and then Standish went lower in one and two, but... I'll tell you what, it looks like Standish is getting a little bit closer to Museberger here as uh, we only have a couple laps left in this feature. I don't know where this is coming from, but he is making some hellacious runs on him right now. I think those tires are just coming in and, and maybe Museberger just burned the prep off of his tires. or He's definitely got a problem because he just got driven by like he was standing still. Well, it's on the final lap as Standish made the pass. It looks like Museberger hit a rut or something, but coming off a of four, Standish is going to steal this one from Museberger. Wow, that was crazy. Standish came out of nowhere and bagged that W. We knew it was quick because oh, we got a few people around in the last lap there. Adam Wellesley, what the fuck, bro? My shit was clean. You just fucked me up. A little bit of a shit show there. Not sure. There's a lot of stuff just transpired there in those last couple laps. Uh, yeah, I would be pissed too. He can run down that berm like that. Let's see what happened to Museberger coming to the white. He hit a rut. Oh, yeah, hit a rut, got all the crossed The rut slowed up. him down too much. Yeah. Let's go down and talk to Caleb Museberger who's uh, licking his wounds. Caleb Museberger finished second in the DQ Bush Series feature here tonight. Caleb, you led the majority of those laps. What happened there towards the end? I just caught a rough spot there. I was, John says I was falling out of the seat. Got to take his word for that. Uh, I was exhausted. I just caught a rut. And <laughs> He was there to pounce. Congrats to Nigel. So, did you go out and party with everybody at Mike's birthday party? I did. So, did that really affect you today or not at all? Uh, no, because I didn't party as hard because I knew I had to show up for this bush race. So, uh, <laughs> at least I wasn't like Mayo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Mayo, Mayo was hurt. <laughs> Gala Museberger finished the second tonight in the DNQ Bush Series feature. Thank you. Nigel Standish, your DNQ Bush Series winner here tonight. Nigel, you made a last lap pass on Museberger. Talk about that last lap. Well, there was this really bad rut down in three, and, and I finally saw it with like eight to go, and I kept missing it, and he didn't miss it that last time, it looked like, and that's all I needed. Otherwise, there's no way we would call it. He got me so much. But, man, thank you to, to Grayson Brookshire and Jackie Whitehouse. They helped me so much this year, and my, my mom, my girlfriend, for coming out here. I know it's, it's on their nerves, but hopefully we can get some sponsorship and get AAR next next race. You know, we're, we got most of the season sold, but we got a couple of races, and that's one of them. So hopefully we can get some sponsorship. Now you ran the ARCA series race. I think you're one of the first. There might have been somebody else who's won an ARCA and Bush race, but uh, to run the ARCA series and win a Bush race is something else. So that's quite an accomplishment. Yeah, that was. I was thinking, you know, we win an ARCA. That's usually how it goes. But I guess we're kind of going to on some work. We're cup stars. We're bound. I guess we're cup next year. So hopefully we can get there. I just took the outside on the ARCA. We didn't have a double files in the Bush, so it didn't even option to fuck that up. <laughs> Nigel Sanders did not fuck up and won the DNQ Bush series feature here tonight. Well, LJ McCleary getting ready for the Miltona 50, but we have so many good memories of this race, and it is one of the legendary DNQ races. And like we talked about earlier, the guys who won in 2015 was all Jason E for Jay Z, and look at that field. That was with the Builder Prepared Clones. Nobody could touch E for that day. You know, Eford was on a rocket ship in his own zip code. Uh, all the heavy hitters we've been fans of in the past couldn't even touch him. Uh, he deserved that beer. Look how clean this track is. 2016, had a rain out, ran this race at night in March. And man, it was a night, it was a really good racetrack. But David Markham, David Markham had his shit together, had the fastest car, looked like he was going to take off and win this thing. A late race caution stopped that from happening. And we had a late race restart. Here's the caution that brought the caution out. Markham chose the bottom on the restart. Now I got the run up top. And we all know the rest. Tim Nye goes on to win this feature. Uh, you got to hate it for David Markham. He came so close. Yeah, but Tim Nye is a fucking wheel man. No matter what you say about the guy, he could drive a damn go-kart. And uh, that, that was an impressive display of force on the outside there. Nye put his name on the trophy that year. <coughs> 2017. That guy looks like Bill Chester. <coughs> a white Bill Chester. Steve Padula took the lead. 
LJ McCleary and him dueled this one out for 50 laps. I mean, it was those two up top, no problem. Couple laps to go, looked like Holzbauer and DeHunt might be a part of it. But ultimately, it was Steve Padula taking home the win, and that was a good one to watch. I think McCleary needed one more lap. Yeah, McCleary was faster, but Padula just didn't make a mistake and wouldn't let him by. Uh, I know Padula was real fast early on, uh, as uh, you know, he got reeled in by McCleary, but good for him, man. Chug that beer, you deserve it. Then last season, 2018, saw Jason Denny flip it out, throw it on the table, and just nobody had anything for him. No. Fat head, big veins, no one could compete. Took home all the women, all the beer, all the money, and the trophy. A dude couldn't be contested with. He took home the championship in 2018. LJ McCleary 2017. Tim Nye got a double pack of those championships as well in the Winston Cup Series. And Jeff Kuhn won a winless championship, but nonetheless, he was a champion. And these clone races and series are getting to be a lot of fun to watch. We'll be right back after this message. Dale, you want me to get down to Danbury? Oh, yeah. Hold on a second. It's pretty easy. Mm -hmm. You, uh... Get out on the main road here. You go straight about half a mile, maybe a little less, and take a left. Follow that straight another half a mile. And then you take a hard left, mm -hmm. right? And then you go straight a half a mile, take another left. Yeah, that's right, man. You just keep on that. Thanks, Joe. Appreciate it. All right, man, no problem. Any, anytime. Oh, the, uh, John, the directions. Pull up to Mr. Martin's car. Follow him. I'm faster. Speed up. You can take the driver out of the race, but you can't take the race out of the driver. Next week, we'll work on parallel parking. All right, Jay-Z, let's check out the Hearts HVAC starting lineup for the Miltona 50. Steven Padula got the Tar Heel Racing Supplies Pole Award with Tyson Freeze on the outside pole. And James Stanley Jr. and our buddy L.J. McCleary on the outside. Caleb Kennard, the proud sponsor of the Goodies Dash Series, and Curtis Markham in your next row. Homeboy Casey Graves and Matt Filament on the outside of him. Let's take a look at the Hearts HVAC Cup Series. Same thing as Heavy Cup, except 390. You can run Burris in this series. Their incentive packages will be announced per event. And here we go, 50 laps on this racetrack. You better sack up and get it done as a green flag is out. We are underway for the Miltona 50. Everyone files through one and two on the bottom as expected. Uh, getting strung out a little bit here. LG McCleary on the back bumper trying to get to fourth place, uh, but can't quite keep up as we come off the turn four. Talk to LJ McCleary before this feature. He said that he was going to try the high side in three and four when things got strung out. He didn't care. We had a five to go caution. He said, I'm going to go up there and see if it's any better or if it's just less bumpy and it feels better and I can hold my own with everybody. I'm going to run up there for the feature. So he has a helmet cam for tonight. We'll see how it goes. Is Tyson Freeze trying to make the move on James Stanley Jr.? Yeah, Freeze is certainly a favorite. We talked about him early on tonight, Bob that he's been so close, been a bridesmaid so many times. Maybe tonight's the night he'll consummate that relationship and pull out a W, but he's got some work to do. Looks like McCleary was already starting to run the top. Caleb Clenard doing a very good job in the fourth position right now with uh, the, the top three guys up here. They are some of the heavy hitters in the Southeast. So uh, for Clenard and LJ to be hanging with them, they're doing a good job as we're on board with LJ McCleary. Yeah, McCleary running that bottom, doing a good job. Let's see what kind of line he takes through three and four here. Uh, he's on the bottom, but he's learning. Again, he's like that wily veteran. He's been here so many times. He's just figuring out where he's faster than everybody else, and he'll make a line for himself before long. Yeah, the 2017 Winston Cup Series champion, as it was known back then, uh, definitely knows what he's doing here at Millbridge Speedway. He runs on a weekly basis here and does a great job. And you saw him that last time off a of three and four, and again uh, this time he's running a little bit higher, a little bit off those bumps, and he had a good run the last lap, not so much this time around as they funnel down through one and two. I think if you can clean that top off, it may work a little bit better, but you got to get way up there, and if you uh, just miss it a little bit, you end up in the mud, so... Pretty tough deal for these guys as they're out here running 50 laps on this uh, track like it is right now. It's extremely tough. 
Yeah, you're going to get that, uh, you know, ultra black monster prep groove going down around the very bottom, and maybe your tires start to burn off and you move up a little bit, maybe half a cart, as someone moves way up the racetrack to try to find a little more grip because your cart's not working on the bottom. Caution is out. Looks like Caleb Clenard and LJ McCleary tangled up in an accident. Let's see what happened here. Ooh, Got the loose shit there, Jay-Z, yeah. didn't he? Talk about that PCP that Angel does. You get that right rear in it, and you'll go around, and McCleary had nowhere to go. Yeah. I just get a little tangled up in that. No shame in that. <clears throat> Throw it out, and uh, we'll get ready to go back green. All right, here we go. We are going back under green. Steve Padula, your leader, with LJ McClear on the outside, and they are bouncing around, but we are back under green. Padula is putting a hurting on the field. It seems like a few guys have got that uh, ready to go as we get ready to turn that shit up. a nice person a lot of us are really smart i'm really smart went to the wharton school of finance even then a long time ago like the hardest or one of the hardest schools to get into did well at the school came out made a fortune well this race got really fucking boring jay-z so we had to throw some entertainment in there as steve Vadula leads this race i love keyboard cat that's some good shit the internet is an endless trove of treasures. If someone's got their hand up and they're stuck in the outside oh, of one and two. Man. Caleb Kennard has an issue, and that will bring out the caution. Yeah. Well, we'll, we'll keep it interesting for you. I mean, holy shit, if the commentary wasn't good enough, what the fuck? We'll get you with other shit as we're going green. Back underway for the Miltona 50, the great American race. I know, freeze shit looks like it's starting to come in a little bit there, Jay-Z. It is. With a track like this, they're using some really heavy prep. And, and depending on, you know, if you got a tire with an inside roll or an outside roll, it's going to do different things. So it could be Freeze is set up for the wrong long run. I mean, I know he's used to this prep game. He runs Atlantic City. He runs a lot of the indoor TQ races. So he, he's no slouch. You know, he's got a, a above average wiener, to be honest. So I, I think he has a chance to beat Padula here and get number one. Yeah, we'll see if he can run him down. These guys have run a lot of laps around this racetrack here. As he has got to run up to Padula's bumper. And it's, it's tough to stay in the seat, too. I'll be honest with you. Getting beaten around like this. Oh, it it's all you got to stay in the seat. It, it wears you out, and it's not like the guys that run this class, and, and certainly not me, are in the gym doing crunches and running on the treadmill. I'm at Popeye's banging out $5 boxes like it's my job, and these guys aren't far behind me. So it's impressive the way they're hanging onto the wheel, and, and they're not messing up their line. They're not giving anyone an opportunity. These guys actually drink the bush beer that they win after the race. Like the case goes home and they finish it. So that should tell you something as well. Let's go down for a race break, and uh, let's go down to Tim Bruski. Well, thanks, guys. Tyson Freeze down here. He is a Bush Series Classic and Iredell County Fair winner, and he is hauling ass right now, just uh, a little too free off the corner. That's all he's got from here. Stephen Padula down here, 2017 Milton champion. He said he is falling out of the seat. He needs a beer really bad, and he feels like a little bitch. Back to you guys. Thank you, uh, Brewski. As we see Tyson Freeze now, if we know Padula's falling out of the seat, he radioed that in. It's going to make a little bit of sense as here comes Freeze for the lead. Dude, we called it, Bob. You know, Freeze is reeling him in slowly, slowly, slowly. And, and you can tell Freeze's go kart, or I'm sorry, Padula's go kart's going away because his hands aren't that full, but the shit's just starting to slow down. And that's the, the prep changing in the tire, Bob. Uh, Freeze is on point. I think he's just going to run away with this shit. I see Stanley, McCleary, Markham out here all making laps, riding it out till we get that five to go caution. 
Do you think they're saving any? I mean, I don't think I've ever seen somebody save their shit and win a race in uh, these races. Pretty much the top two guys are going to end up winning or battling it out. Yeah, it's not like they got a pit stop for this race to bolt on a different set of tires. They'll have a, a different combination of prep in there. Uh, they have what they have. You know, Stanley's a, a guru. He's got He knows that phantom stuff inside and out as we're on board with LG and McCleary here. Um, so, again, it's just a... Uh, 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 Atypical track tonight. Um, I expect some of these guys that are struggling to be quicker the next time around. Looks like McCleary's starting to roll that high side in three and four a little bit. What you said he was going to do? Yeah, he's, it's ruddy just getting on entry, though. That's the problem. And as that dirt keeps getting pushed up higher and higher, it's getting uh, more ruts in it. So it's a little tough to uh, run that. Yeah, there's there's no way to settle the cart and make sure the, the weight's where you want it to be on entry. So you're just fighting it and driving the hell out of it all to the corner. Uh, on the plus side, it's letting us see who can really drive here tonight. And uh, you'll let you put your skills to the test. Yeah, and Padula's keeping pace with Frizo. It's like he's got a rap at the chase, and he's actually catching him. So I thought Frizo was going to drive away, but it doesn't look like he's doing that right now. You know, it could be that Padula just caught a rut wrong one lap and let Freeze get underneath him, um, and Padula is just not going to let wow, it happen he again. He left rears him real hard. Yeah, I guess that's what I guess that's what happened. You just got to catch a ruts right. I mean, if you fuck up and hit a rut the wrong way, you're done. And we saw Museberger do that in the Bush feature, and it just ruined his day. Now we got lap traffic out here, and uh, that's Curtis Markham, the Spire Motorsports machine. And he is getting uh, put a lap down, but it's it's tough. And, you know, especially for, you know, Curtis, he's, he's in a B-level uh, piece right there up here against some of the uh, top teams in the series. You know, he he's bringing some money to that deal. Yeah, I mean, he's got some talent for sure. Uh, you know, but he's making an investment. So, you know, it all depends on what type of margins uh, Spire wants to make. If they, you know, if they want to, you know, get rich, then maybe, you know, he's not going to be in that good of a car. But maybe they want to throw him a bone. Put some new tires on it. Who knows? So, um, that, oh, oh that was terrible for Padula there. Yeah, that, he caught the rut right there really hard, and he was he was starting to dime in the corner harder and harder. So let's look at that again. Yeah, that killed it. He was trying. He was getting some hellacious runs doing a hard dime in there, and uh, just he got a little bit too much. He was just trying to get underneath those ruts, and and it was working because you saw him catch and freeze a little bit to three and four, but a bit off more than he can chew. Oh yeah. Now Freeze has a, a healthy lead, but we're going to get a five-to-go caution, and caution is out, and, oh, Steve Padula. What a shame. Uh, hands on the head. Uh, I think we can read that body language from all the way up here in the booth, Bob. Uh, you had a good run going, uh, just not as night tonight. No, big, whoa. Must have had a rut the wrong way, or uh, he just needed a caution because that thing snapped around pretty quick. I'd be flat wore out if I were him. This, this track's tough, and... You know, you really got to sack up to turn in a good lap as a freeze is underway here and powering off turn four. Back underway, Padula went to the top, and uh, nobody took the top, as you noticed. And uh, that's going to shoot him back to the fourth position, but uh, he's got a good enough piece. As long as he's caught his wind here, he may have a shot at it. Yeah, it's tough being on the outside. You know, your left side tires might be right in those main ruts, and, and you can't get a run, especially if they're picking up the throttle early in turn three. Uh, but again, he's making some ground. Maybe the next three or four laps he can get P2 back. Uh, we'll see. But I don't think anyone's going to have anything for Freeze this evening as uh, he's uh, you know, closing in on his first Miltona win. Yeah, James Stanley Jr. in second, but Padula's running his shit down really quick. And uh, Freeze doing a great job. Uh, Freeze has an uh, impressive win record here in the DNQ series. And uh, if he can win the Miltona 50, that will definitely add to that. And uh, he said he was going to run for a uh, Cup Series championship this year, so he's going to give Jason Denny a run for his money. Good. I'm glad to see it. We need some more competition out here to, to keep Denny honest. He, he won a, a great championship last year, but you know, hopefully some more competition will show up and uh, push him even further. Two laps to go for Tyson Freeze, and it doesn't look like anybody's going to touch him. He's going to take the white flag. He's going to cruise off into the sunset and put his name on that legendary, coveted Miltona 50 trophy. I think that's a good win right there. He he earned that, uh, ran the leader down, got by Padula, and just checked out the rest of the night. Um, you know, I hope he gets really drunk. He uh, he deserves it. Let's go down and talk to our top three finishers from our Miltona 50 race. Okay. Well, earlier he won the Heavy Cup Series race with James Stanley Jr. Come on third here tonight in Miltona 50. 
Looked like he had a bit, pretty good piece, but just not enough to give up to Tyson Steve. Yeah, I, I didn't have enough bite in the tires. You know, it's a big jump going from 425 to 390. I tried to run a similar tire and it just didn't bite as hard. Third place goes for it. There was one time I saw all four tires off the ground on yours, Tyson, and Steve's hardest. It got a little rough there in three four. It was tough, but again, like I said earlier, yeah, at least we had a place to race today. I mean, he did what he could out of the track. I mean, I hate to say I ran rougher tracks, but you know, I've ran tracks just as rough as this, so I mean, it is what it is. James Stanley Jr. comes home with a good third place finish here tonight, Daytona 50. 2017, Daytona 50 winner. Steve McDowell down here, finished second. He actually had a pretty good lap here. Uh, he got pretty bumpy. Ball had a seat of what happened. Did you have a lot of luck on that? Well, I fell out of the seat. But it got so rough down there in three and four, and I got that low speedway body on it, and I just I couldn't get through three and four no more. Um, it is what it is. I couldn't be happier, no more happier than to lose it to Tyson, man. We've had a lot of close races over the years, and and uh, he's he's been one of my top whatever he rivals, whatever you want to call it. And it was a good race, man. It was a lot of fun. A lot of fun. It's good to see you, Priest, and Stanley all out here, guys, racing each other really hard. Really good fighting. But it's got to be fun for you. Man, it is. It's a good time, and uh, it is. It's a really good time. I don't get to do it much anymore because we move mountain to dirt cars. And, we're just doing this for the winter time to have a little bit of fun, and we've all been such good friends. I mean, Tyson drove for me right before I quit racing. Stanley drove for me. Uh, pretty much all our, all our crew right there the whole night. It's a, it's a, it's a hell of a time. A hell of a time. Steve Pagola comes up second tonight. Uh, uh, down here to give Tyson Priest and Daytona 50 trophy. Good job, bro. Good job. Tyson, look at this trophy. Look at all the names on here. Tim Nye, Jason Denny, Steve Padula, Jason Eford, which, uh, well, okay. But, uh, yeah, he won it. But. That is a legendary lineup on that trophy. Jason Denny also back here. What a what a race to win. And a very prestigious one. A long race, a tough race. I'm absolutely, I'm absolutely exhausted. Uh, we knew the track was going to be muddy when we come down here. Hell, it's rained every day for like three months. And uh, so the track was really rough and it was very uh, physically demanding on me, but I had a great time. I want to thank uh, Jared Brooks, Chris Williams that helped me, James. We all had a great time. I haven't gotten to race with Steven in a while. We used to run together all the time at Woodley. Put the 25 back on it, so it was just like old days, and I had a hell of a time. That was a lot of fun. Uh, very, like I say, very exhausted. But I, I'm tickled to have this trophy. I couldn't be any happier. Now, Tyson, we heard you're going to run a lot of these races this year. Can we see you more coming up? Yeah, absolutely. I, I feel I, I plan to run a full, mostly a full schedule in the cup. I mean, hell, it's 30 minutes up the road. You can't beat it. I mean, it's a great time. It's good training. The way racing should be. You know, hell, it's seven o'clock. We're getting out. I had a great time. Thank you guys for everything y'all do. Tyson Freeze takes home that awesome Miltona 50 trophy and a case of Bush Light. Some beer here to drink tonight. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Yeah, no problem. Thank you. I had like what, like six references to Mel Genitalia the whole the whole show. Could yeah, that's worse. not bad though. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's it's fine, part of it. I mean, Dixon and Touch is not that gay. All right, Jay Z, let's take a look at the top ten in the Arca Series race. Tony Barkman takes home his first win. Eli Ware, a uh, youngin that is running in this series, did a good job finishing second. Yeah, Ware's got that black steel dripping on the back of his neck. Uh, put it P2. I, I think we're going to win or two out of him later this year. And uh, our man Standish, uh, again, finishing top five week after week after week. I can't wait to see what this series brings as far as competition because it is very competitive. So uh, anybody can win that championship. In the Goodies Dash series, Adam Welch took home the win. Mike Connerino and David Markham round out your top three. Yeah, uh, Melton Shirk and Showalter, uh, you know, they'll get their stuff tuned up. They took some notes down after this evening um, in between their, their bush lights and, and whatnot. So um, I think this class will grow, and I think we'll have a good turnout next time. In the Heavy Cup series, James Stanley Jr. took home his first win of 2019. David Mayo, very rough and hungover, finished second. Yeah, good for him. His eyes were bloodshot as hell when he showed up for pre-race tech. We were worried he wasn't going to make it, but uh, he sacked up and did what he had to do. Uh, and Stanley uh, ran a hell of a race and finished P1. Push series, Nigel Standish makes the last-minute move on Caleb Musburger. Hits a rut, 
tough shit. I mean, it happens, and uh, Standish comes home with his first DNQ win. Rob Bates finishes fourth. Uh, another name to watch in this series as we continue on. Yeah, Bates had a bunch of top five runs last year. We called his name out a whole bunch. And Fur, surprisingly, it came out of nowhere and finished P3 in a very competitive Bush series. So a, a good race this evening. And the Cup Series. Tyson Freeze takes home the Miltona 50 trophy and a stacked field in the top three there. Yeah, Freeze, Padula, Stanley, uh, those are big guys, especially uh, you know here in the Southeast. They win a lot of races. And then the old Wiley veteran, McCleary, in fourth. Um, you know, we'll, we'll have a, a better race next week when the track's more typical, and I think the competition will be even better. Well, our next race is at the AAR Speedway, and it is game on. The Shark Lounge 50 for the DNQ Hearts HVAC Cup Series. And we will have all five series racing there as well. I cannot wait to watch uh, that race from that asphalt track. It is really fast. A lot of shit happens very quickly. Uh, yeah, you, you need to make sure you show up at least half sober. That track will suck everything out of you. Uh, you know, the, the real men come out on top there. I, I know we got the brothers that run there all the time that show up for that track, and uh, the regulars got their work cut out for them. Well, it's the AAR Speedway, and that's coming up on February 2nd. For Jay-Z, I'm Bob Duato. We want to thank you for watching this shit, and uh, tune in for the next race in AAR Speedway. We cannot wait to uh, do that one as well, but uh, we will see you guys in February.